this is the Jordan 1 Palomino. It's the biggest Jordan 1 release this month, and people are definitely hyped for the drop. Guys, today I'm going over the best new sneaker releases, and this pair of ones is definitely up there. They released this weekend on September the 2nd for $180 for you guys out in the US, or £175 here in the UK. Now, the interesting thing about Jordan 1s recently is, unlike a couple years ago, not every single colorway sells out. So honestly, it's kind of a tough call to say how hard these things are actually going to be to get. Now, in Nike's description of the Jordan 1 Palomino, they call it luxury and a sophisticated sneaker with premium leather. The name Palomino is exactly the same as the Jordan 3s that dropped a couple weeks ago. It stems from a Palomino horse, which essentially has the genetic color of a golden coat and a white mane. I think that name makes a lot more sense for the Jordan 3s than it does for this pair of Jordan 1s. I mean, the only detail on this pair of 1s that you could say hint to a Palomino name is that golden text that you find on the tongue tag. I think if we're being completely honest here, this seems a lot more like Jordan brand trying to capitalize on the hype factor of the Jordan 1 Mocha and of course the Travis Scott Jordan 1. And that inevitably has led many people to actually nickname this pair of shoes the Mocha 2.0. Now I will say in direct comparison, the shade of brown on the Palomino ones is definitely slightly different to the Mocha one. The outsole is brown instead of black and there's obviously a lot more black leather on this pair of sneakers. Here's what I think is the best way to describe this pair of shoes. The Mocha Jordan 1 is kind of like the black toe version in terms of color blocking and this pair is obviously more like the bread colorway. And then obviously the Travis Scott's, I guess you could say, would be more like the Chicago. What I'm trying to say here is that this is a template that we've seen Jordan Brand use over and over again. It's just this time it's not of an original colorway. Now let's quickly dive over to the materials and let's address that claim that Nike made about premium leather. I think Nike needs to calm down a little bit on that. I mean, the most I'm going to give this pair of shoes is that you could say it's slightly better than your standard pair of Jordan 1. Definitely not saying that it's terrible. In fact, the brown suede that you find on this pair of shoes feels really nice in hand and super soft. This pair also has the slightly bigger Nike swoosh when you compare it to the Jordan 1 Mocha. In fact, it's the same size Nike swoosh that you would find on the Jordan 1 Chicago Lost and Found. That's for anybody who really likes to nitpick the details, but some people definitely prefer the bigger swoosh, potentially others the smaller one. Now, as for sizing, I personally go true to size with all Jordan 1, so that's what I'm going to recommend to you guys. There's nothing different about this pair of sneakers. Overall, guys, it is a solid pair of Jordan 1s. I really, really like the color I think it's going to fill the gap for a lot of people when it comes to an earth-toned, full-ready sneaker. It's a lot more toned down than some of the other Jordan 1s that we've seen recently this year, so I think it's going to be a go-to for a decent amount of people. It also pairs nicely with a lot of the same colors that you would wear typically with the Jordan 1 Mocha, which is an extremely popular pair of shoes. So if you already have that pair, you wanted a 2.0 version or just a slightly different take on it, then all of your same Mocha 1 outfits will look super good with this pair as well. So if you did cop them, I really don't think you're going to be disappointed with what you get. But hey, maybe you've been wanting a little switch up from Jordans recently. Well, this is the New Balance Warped Runner. It's a brand new silhouette from a company that typically has just been releasing retro models and older looking sneakers. Now, this pair has a lot going for it in many different areas, but honestly, I think the main reason you're going to buy this pair of shoes is just the insane comfort that you get. Now, they released last month in August. They retail for $150 out in the US or £155 here in the UK. So it kind of falls into the mid-range in terms of pricing. And honestly, this pair of sneakers reminds me of the New Balance 327. Not so much in the looks, although there is definitely some things that hold similarities. But just in the fact that it's a new model and definitely takes a different route to what we've typically known New Balance for. They have a very futuristic yet super minimalistic design. But honestly, I think the best way to describe this pair of shoes is basically New Balance took a performance running shoe and a regular New Balance lifestyle model and just smash them together. The upper is a mesh base with a super soft, hairy feeling suede wrapping around the entire upper. The giant N logo is printed onto that base mesh material, but one of my favorite details and materials on this pair of sneakers is in the sock liner. Listen, this material that they've added to the sock liner feels so freaking good in hand. It feels so incredibly soft that it just makes you want to put your foot straight in there and get to wearing them. Either way, as you can tell, the upper on this pair of shoes, well, that's where you find most of the traditional New Balance lifestyle details on it, whereas the midsole, well, that's where you find a lot of the performance running shoe inspiration. It is a massive stack of foam, which is actually dual density. Just the general aggressive aerodynamic shape that this pair of shoes has gives it a very performance runner look. And it's also infused with New Balance's fuel cell cushioning technology, which is typically something they only place on their flagship performance running sneakers. Now, I will say the New Balance Warped Runner in direct comparison to a performance running shoe from New Balance, like the 1080V, 
12. It doesn't feel exactly as squishy, but it does kind of find a perfect midpoint, I believe, in terms of squishiness and just a more firmer ride for something that you can just wear all day long. Overall, it's insanely comfortable. I think this is a very interesting, good looking pair of sneakers from New Balance. And I think it has a ton of potential with a lot of other colorways in the pipeline. Now, as for sizing, I personally went true to size and that seemed to fit me just perfectly fine. New Balance is pretty bang on when it comes to sizing. So that's what I'm going to recommend to you. Right now, speaking of comfort, the next sneaker is kind of known for the opposite. This is the Jordan 4 Frozen Moments. Now, it might be a little bit of a harsh take, but at the very least, it's certainly not the most comfortable Jordan model. Either way, this pair dropped a couple days ago on August the 26th. It retails for £190 here in the UK or $210 if you're around the US. So yeah, it is definitely the most expensive on today's list. Now, overall, I think this is a very nice colorway of the Jordan 4. I do really like it, except for one freaking detail, and that is the chrome that you find on all of the plastic eye stays. Now, apart from it just aesthetically not looking great in my opinion, practically there's a problem too. You see, straight out of the box, this pair comes with a tag attached to it, basically saying that you should expect defects and inconsistencies. But even if your pair turns out to be completely fine, it's still chrome plastic, which over time has typically been something that ends up peeling or just getting scratched up and looking terrible. Now, potentially there's something different with this chrome plastic that they've added and it ends up aging super well, but I'm not entirely sure. Just typically it, it doesn't end up being a good look. In fact, honestly, I'm very tempted to just take this pair of shoes and just sand off all of the metallic details and just repaint something different over the top. I don't know if that would work, but I would definitely like this sneaker a lot better if it didn't have the chrome. Okay, so without harping on the things that I don't like about this pair of shoes for too long, I do want to say overall, it's a fantastic colorway. It's a lot of neutral tones, some really nice gray hues mixed with the sail midsole and the sail laces. I think it actually looks phenomenal. It's covered in a really nice feeling suede material. The toe box has some really interesting leather where it kind of looks like patent leather, but it's not. The colorway itself, again, seems to be a little bit weird when it comes to the description that Nike gives of it. Apparently, it's kind of inspired by two different things. It's either the Frozen Moments commercial that aired back in 1997 or the shot against Cleveland Cavaliers back in 1989, the very same year that the Air Jordan 4 was debuted. Either way, whatever the colorway inspiration is, overall, I think this is a solid pair of fours. And if it's something that you're interested in, I think it's a great option to pick up, provided the chrome details on it are not a deal breaker for you because they almost were for me. Now, when it comes to sizing, I personally go true to size with all of my Jordan 4s. They fit me just fine. So that's what I'm going to recommend to you. But there you have it, guys. Those are three of the latest and best new sneaker releases. Let me know which one you would pick down in the comment section and check out that video over there to get prepared for the top 10 most hyped sneakers dropping this month.